Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Wave Engine. Now, if you've been following this channel for some time, I've discussed this one a couple times in the past, as we will see shortly. Uh, this is a C-sharp powered free, but not open source game engine that is capable of targeting all kinds of platforms. As you can see, the list in front of you, that is what Wave Engine 2.5 can target. Now, what we are looking at specifically is Wave Engine 3.0, Preview. Now, I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the word preview because that's exactly what it is. It's nowhere near ready for prime time. But we are going to take a quick look at that preview because, frankly, it was just launched a few days back. And honestly, I thought Wave Engine was dead. Um, and we'll get into exactly why I thought it was dead in just a couple of seconds. So once again, if you are interested, it is available at waveengine.net. Now, I actually covered this game engine a while back in my Closer Look series. Closer Look series was a combination between uh, getting started guide and a review of game engine so it gave a good idea if a game engine was right for you and if it was it kind of showed you how to onboard it showed you the process of getting started doing a simple thing in the engine and for the most part what you'll find in that video still holds up for wave engine the 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 Editor is obviously going to be different, but the programming method is pretty similar. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Wave Engine, do check that out. Additionally, I revisited Wave Engine when 2.5.0 was released. Now, 2.5.0 was the last official release, and you'll notice right here, that was in August of 2018, which is a big chunk of why I thought it was dead. And in fact, if you go over to their blog, which we're going to check out next, you will see the last two posts were actually in July of 2018. So well over, or almost a year has gone by and complete radio silence. So the fact that Wave Engine 3.0 preview was just released shows, hey, signs of life. That is cool. There's definitely stuff going on. And it is a complete rewrite of their editor. They went from a GTK Plus backend to uh, UWP, and their renderer is now using uh, DX12 Vulkan or Metal uh, on the back end, or at least that is the plan here. Um, they got a lot of discussions about what's going on. Also, as part of the re-architecture, you're seeing massive performance improvements. So you can see Wave Engine 2.5 uh, rendering at 6.6 .6 frames per second versus 121. Uh, so like a 20-fold improvement of speed in that particular case. Uh, they have an overview of what their framework is like, what technologies they depend upon to make things work. Another thing about this particular release is that default runtime is .NET Core 3.0 and it is going to get WebAssembly support. So now they've also implemented a new launcher and updating system, uh, the new editor, which we're going to check out in a sec, so I'm going to mostly gloss over that. And inside of that editor is a number of new uh, integrated editors that we will also quickly browse in just a second. They've also got XR support, XR being Microsoft terminology for extended reality, which is virtual reality, mixed reality, and augmented reality all mashed together. So that's XR or extended reality, an acronym that I despise. Uh, out of the box, they also have single pass instant stereo rendering, important for rendering um, for VR type platforms. Um, and then an extensible rendering pipeline, an updated and new uh, program lifecycle, and as I mentioned earlier, new web project support. Now, some of this stuff is definitely a work in progress, but without further ado, let us jump on over to the editor. And here you can see it, and you will notice that it has a nice dark theme. Now, this is actually settable. This also crashed the last time I did it, so let's see what happens. So, light theme. There we go. So it works, and it actually looks pretty sharp. Although this is, and I am one person, like one of six developers in the world, I think, that actually generally prefers the light theme. I'm not that big into dark themes like all the rest of you, but in this case, the dark theme is substantially better, in my opinion. But anyways, the, the options are there, which is always nice out of the box. You will notice, going across the menu, that things are a little sparse. Um... There, there's not really a lot here as of yet. But what you'll notice here is open C Sharp Editor. Now this process is relatively unchanged other than the changes to the lifecycle itself. Um, but this is your back end C Sharp project. Again, it uses .NET Core 3.0 now. Um, but the coding process is pretty straightforward. And if you check out that um, open, uh, Culture Look series I did, you'll see how you can code using Wave Engine. But it's pretty straightforward. It's a separate project on the back end. So we've got uh, my application, Wave content, which is auto-generated, and this is a mapping to all of the things that you create. So there is a checker texture over here in the editor. If we go into the texture section, so you see checker, 
it is automatically mapped over on the code side. And then you're seeing here, which is actually completely empty, but this is basically how you code your logic using C Sharp. You can also create C Sharp scripts that can be attached as components to entities in the scene. And you can also create your own components, a bit more on components in just a second. And then you have your platform specific loader like here, which is just setting up your window, your platform, again, your platform specific stuff is initialized here and there basically is your game loop. And that is the coding side of things. That's about as far as we're gonna get into this. Once 3.0 is fully released, I'll do a more in-depth hands-on guide. Uh, now we're gonna take a look around the editor. You got your code editing environment, oh, sorry, your uh, scene editing environment right here. Like there's your camera, there's your light. I've had it be a little bit buggy uh, in the past. Now we can go ahead, see here it's composed of entities. We can right click and create a new entity and your entities include things like cameras, lights, primitives and you can also go ahead and create meshes basically just drag and drop your mesh in as an asset it automatically imports it or you come up here and do an import of assets and i don't think it filters file names yet no it doesn't uh, but fbx dae both work at this point in time so i can go ahead and we could for example create add a new child we'll create a primitive and we'll make it a sphere so there you go we got a sphere in the world uh, you'll see you can do things like assign materials to it uh, the sphere itself is composed of different components. This is kind of becoming the de facto standard for 99% of game engines now. So you see this sphere is composed of a transform 3D, a material component, a spherical mesh, and a mesh renderer. We can go ahead and add a new component to it. There's also, this is not an open source engine, but there is code on GitHub showing you some of the components code so you can create your own components to add to the engine. Uh, you'll see here various different options, things that you would expect in terms of components. So if I wanted to add you know, physics stuff or slider joints or whatever to something, uh, they are here. Um, or like a mesh renderer, if that's automatically created, if I import a file mesh, character controllers, uh, some default behaviors like look at behavior. Um, and that's kind of how you add things. So we could add, be, give it give the ability to automatically look at the camera, for example, which it doesn't really that effective when you're dealing with a sphere because it's gonna turn and look the exact same from any angle. But you get an idea how uh, things work in this engine. Basically, it is component-based as you would expect. Now, interestingly, I don't know if you can get rid of components and it looks like you can't. So hopefully that behavior is added eventually because I, I don't know how you actually remove a component. Uh, you can disable it, but I don't know if you can remove it yet. So that's some functionality. I think they will need to add at some point in the future. Anyways, that is the gist of how seeds are composed. You're, you're probably used to entity component systems at this point in time. So let's get into the new thing. So you see here, we've got uh, different categories of things like effects, materials, render layers, samples, scenes, and textures. Scenes is pretty straightforward. This is a scene. This is just the folder holding them. Over here though, we get into effects. So anytime you want, you can right click and create. So you can create all of these things, scenes, effects, samplers, materials, and layers. So here we'll look at the standard effect. And this is essentially a shader editor that is built directly in. Uh, so you've got some tools at the top here uh, for and we can get all of the different settings available or parameters going in. Uh, we can define the values as they're going to show up or display here. Uh, we can change the way that this guy looks in general. We can change the lighting around it. We can change the render path on it. Like so uh, it, it's, it's a full functioning shader editing environment. Now you'll notice here, the editors are also all tabbed. So as I open new ones, they show up over here. Materials works kind of the same way. So let me open up a material. Here is a default material. Uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, you're seeing a real-time preview of it here. You can apply the effect of choice if you want. So what here you see standard effect. If I'd created my own shader to apply to it, we could drop it down in this list, but I only have, but here I'll, there a duplicate. No, there is no duplicate. Uh, I could create my own. It would show up here and, and that effect would be applied to the uh, material as we were creating it. But here you see, you can obviously do things like define the color. You got a number of different settings here. Um, all the different maps you would expect are available there. You can also um, pick the render layer that is applied. So in this case, the opaque render layer is being applied. We can switch over to the alpha one, for example, eh, that kind of stuff. So pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, speaking of render layers, you can bring that one up. And here is the opaque render layer. Here is a preview of the end result. Once again, you can switch out the object that it is applied to. Um, you can set raster state, blend state settings, and depth stencil state. We get into samplers. This is for your texture sampling. You can see a preview of how it's gonna work. So that's a linear clamping. And this is 
a linear wrapping, and you can see the end result. You've got your settings over here that you can configure. And then finally, we have textures. And textures are probably pretty predictable to you. So here is a texture, it's a checker texture. Uh, you can see, you can do um, generating MIP maps and so on, scaling mode, and that's kind of it. You can also pick the pixel format for it to be in from a number of different choices. And those are your standard editors at this point in time. Now, I imagine it's it because all the code works on the back end that it, it is quite usable at this point, but there's still, uh, you know, quite a bit still to be added, but it, it's definitely a step forward. Uh, the performance from what I have seen is pretty solid. I have experienced the occasional crash, but um, there's a good basis here. There's a good foundation. It's definitely um, an engine with some potential. Now, there's right now, there's only the ability to build. Um, so I, I don't know how you handle different platforms, if you can handle them at all. I don't know if I come over here, if we've got more build targets. Uh, I don't think so. I think there's literally, yeah. So there's no options. Yeah. So there's no options over here. So basically it seems like uh, Windows targets only at this point in time and minimalistic functionality up there. Um, no integrated help or anything like that yet. So this is no means a production ready engine in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, but eventually it will be. Nice thing is it's also completely customizable. As you can see, we can pin things in. Uh, we can unpin them. I believe we can move them. We can collapse them and auto hide them out. Uh, so you got some decent amount of customization on the UI. So like I said, yeah, you can move and you can snap to wherever you want things to be. Uh, you can minimize things that you don't particularly need. And I don't know if you can bring them back. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't know how I would get that window back now that I closed it. But like I said, it, it's pretty early on, so give it a bit of time. But it's definitely nice to see that this engine is still around. Um, it, it, um, it's kind of in a very similar area as Zenko. Now, they seem to be heavily targeting, um, targeting uh, corporate environments and, and virtual reality, uh, but there definitely is, this is a game engine. There's, there's no question about that. And it's one that I, you know what, I, I don't think that 3.0 is even close to ready for use yet. That's why this is a preview, but it's definitely an engine I am going to be keeping my eye on. And um, as we saw very much earlier on, with the uh, with this document here, they go into some detail about what's in there, why they've done what they've done, and where they're going with it. So if you are interested in learning more, uh, do be sure to check out the article on the uh, Wave Engine 3.0 preview, and you'll kind of get a bit more of an under the hoods uh, thing. I'm not going to read this to you; it takes me about an hour, uh, but I will definitely link that. So that is it. That is Wave Engine 3.0 uh, preview, uh, very first preview of it. So again, they were radio silent for almost a year. Uh, so it's cool to see that this project is still out there. And um, you know what? I, I always will applaud more options, more game engines, especially ones that support a number of different platforms and are free. Um, and this one is a pretty mature code base, even if it doesn't have a huge community around it. So definitely check that out if it is looking interest to you, but do keep in mind, it is pretty early on. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.